Okay. Am I wired? Yep. Hi. Hello. Uh, welcome to this presentation on the Infinidat storage solution. My name is uh, Gregory Turetsky. I'm product manager at uh, Infinidat, responsible for the file and cloud offerings that we have. And uh, if you are coming from uh, the IT side and you're about to choose some storage solution, you probably have to pick two of the three, right? That's the standard solution. You're looking into a reliable, affordable, or fast solution, you probably will have to focus on two of three, and you can find plenty of offerings. But should it be this way, and can we come with something that would meet all those aspects of uh, Triangle? So let's look into the solution that we provide with the Infinidat, the product that we call Infinibox. And you can find more information about it right here at the booth. So first of all, talking about reliability of the solution, we provide a storage that is uh, 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 very reliable. We're talking about uh, three controller nodes within the storage frame that we offer that are interconnected through InfiniBand. Between them, they provide triple uh, active configuration. And then uh, I'll skip the RAM and the cache for a second, uh, we use JBODs connected to those storage controllers. Right, so th uh, we can go up to 480 physical drives within uh, the storage frame, and every single one of those servers within the frame can see all 480 drives at the same time. Now, the data itself sits on the hard drives. However, we also offer a large scale RAM uh, within these controller nodes that provide write cache. So when the data is written into InfiniBox, it actually is written into RAM. It is copied through internal InfiniBand connection to a peer server, and then the acknowledge comes back to the client. So the write latency here is about RAM latency, basically. So it's very, very fast. For the read access, read optimization, we have massive SSD cache across those three controller nodes. We are going up to 200 terabytes, uh, or actually over 200 terabytes of SSD cache within the system. So most of your random reads would go through the SSD cache level. And so we'll talk about the performance in the following slides, but we provide highly reliable system with a very high performance. And there's a lot of focus going into uh, reliability and the availability of the solution. Talking about functionality, what do you get with this? We are offering a unified storage solution, so you can do NFS, you can do Fiber Channel, you can do iSCSI. You actually can do FICON for the mainframe to the same box. Uh, we offer very scalable snapshots, both read-only and writable snapshots that you can use with our systems. We provide compression uh, within the box. We provide the effective, uh, uh, efficient replication for the disaster recovery purposes. The data is encrypted, and we put a lot of focus on the manageability of the solution. So everything we do within the system can be done through the RESTful API that is fully documented, that is available for the developers. And then we provide Python SDK that can be used also to manage the system. Uh, the command line interface and the graphical user interface that we provide is built on top of the RESTful API. So again, everything you want to do with the system can be done through RESTful API or Python SDK. And then we can build things on top of it, right? So we, we have Cinder driver that leverages our Cinder, uh, Python SDK. We have uh, Ansible playbooks that uh, are built on top of the Python SDK and can be used easily to manage and provision uh, capacity on InfiniBox and so on. Talking about scalability, right? So this is a few snippets here of uh, commands running on the InfiniBox. This is an example of amount of volumes that we have with Cinder. Right, we support up to 100,000 volumes uh, on uh, InfiniBox, so it's a pretty big number. Uh, we do also NFS there, so we, we can do up to 4,000 NFS file systems per InfiniBox. And every single file system may be, uh, can be as big as the entire file, uh, InfiniBox capacity. So if we're talking about 2.8 petabytes usable before compression, uh, within the InfiniBox, you can have single file system as large as the box, right? So you can see an example here of 2.4 petabyte NFS file system, which is good. 
Talking about number of files within this file system, we have very eff efficient implementation of the file system that we built uh, on our own, uh, which is used internally within the, the, the InfiniBox. And we have basically no limitation on the amount of files that we can create. What you can see here is basically the output of the df-i command, talking about billions of files within a single file system without any performance degradation dealing with this. We can have a file of a petabyte size. We can have files actually bigger than a petabyte. Again, I didn't see yet a customer who would use this in production, but we support it. And anything below that, obviously. So scale is definitely there. Talking about performance, we get better results in the lab, but what we're showing here is what we get with the customers, whether it's in production or testing that the customer runs in his environment. All right, so you can see here some examples of the workloads in production where customers are getting uh, over 4.4.5 gigabytes a second throughput with the writes, over 4 gigabytes a second reads, and all that is going into sub 1 millisecond latency uh, in a hybrid system. This is what we are getting in some uh, test scenarios that our customers are running going beyond 900,000 uh, IOPS per second with small blocks or going to over 12 gigabyte a second with uh, larger blocks, obviously. So definitely performance is there. How it all applies into the OpenStack environment. So I showed this uh, reference to Python SDK and Cinder integration. Basically, you can get everything from a single box, right? We have the unified storage solution. So you can have uh, our object storage with fiber channel or iSCSI and expose it and manage it through Cinder. That's uh, obvious. We can show it here in the, in the booth. So, and so volumes can be created attached to Nova instances and so on. In addition to that, we can use our NFS offering and use our NFS file systems as a shared storage for Nova instances. So if you have multiple Nova hypervisor hosts, and instead of using the local uh, storage for instances, you can use shared capacity and then ease uh, live migration of uh, uh, VMs between multiple hypervisors. So uh, same thing applies for Glance. So you can use, again, our NFS export from InfiniBox, mount it on your Glance server, and store all the images there uh, on a shared file system. Uh, we also can see examples when people are doing our block storage behind uh, object gateways. So uh, there is a common practice when uh, people deploy things like Swift and other object solutions using local drives and we deploy in multiple servers this way. Uh, we also see that some people uh, prefer actually going uh, in this route and allocating ca uh, capacity from the, our block storage, leveraging the protection that we offer and reducing the waste of the disk space offered by the replication of Swift or other object storage solutions. So they can bring up multiple uh, object storage nodes using our block storage and, uh, behind it and leverage our protection instead of wasting capacity for the replication or erasure recording at the Swift level. So again, you can get all of those offerings that may serve your entire OpenStack cluster or other environments, right? We have many customers doing things that are not OpenStack and definitely OpenStack is also a good one. So to summarize, uh, we are providing a, a highly scalable solution that is highly functional, manageable. You can basically leverage our offerings with Cinder or Ansible or anything else, or you can uh, integrate our solution into whatever management system you may have through the REST API that we provide. You get high performance, you get high reliability, and you can get it at a really affordable price. And I didn't talk about the price, but you can definitely get to our booth, which is right behind this. Uh, uh, scene and talk about what we do and how we can do it for you. I think I covered that in 10 minutes instead of 20. So any question? Yes? Why would I do this when I can do a software defined layer instead? Thank you, Eric. Uh, so you may do software defined level 
but you probably can do it in two cases. You are either a very small company that can afford doing things on their own, uh, but that would be a very small scale and one guy may handle that if he has time and he likes it. Or you're a very large company that can afford hiring many people who would support your software-defined infrastructure and develop it and, and maintain it. If you are somewhere in between, and we see many, many enterprise customers are somewhere in between, they usually prefer to get a fully supported solution coming from uh, somebody that can provide this global support. That's one point. The other thing, if you talk about the software uh, only, we are actually software-only solutions. I was talking about this hardware that we provide and the servers and disks and so on. In reality, all this hardware is basically commodity servers, right? We use uh, servers from one of the leading server providers. We can go with the others. In our lab, we actually test constantly all various v uh, offerings from different vendors, right? Uh, but you can think about them, whatever, Supermicro, Dell, Intel, Quanta, and so on. And uh, we are trying to basically see the best fit into our needs. So if you, man if you come back to our booth, you'll see that we're talking about high, very high availability, something like seven nines availability for the Infinibox, right? That's way above everything that we've heard here, for example, in different presentations of people talking four nines, five nines, and so on. We're talking about very high performance. So to be able to provide this and guarantee this uh, kind of performance and reliability, we have to ensure a very high compatibility between our software and the hardware. So we run multiple regressions for every single system that has been sent to the customer. Before the, we ship a single system to a customer, it runs through several days of regression tests. And we constantly finding all kinds of issues with different vendors. So once we s standardize on one vendor where we see lowest amount of problems or maybe no problems after some time, we, start, we, we try to go with that vendor, but again, we see cases when we may go with other hardware as well. So our, our secret sauce is in the software, but we also very carefully select specific hardware that allows us to guarantee high performance and availability. Other questions? So you can stop by the booth B19 right behind you when you go back. You can get uh, all kinds of white papers that we have there. And you also can scan your badge and you may win a very nice headset. Thank you.